words doesn't really matter. And then we use a search engine, in our case we use Yahoo because it's easily programmable, to simply query the search engine with two or three of these words at a time in different combinations and get a long list of web addresses that we can visit. And then we can download those pages automatically. And if we are interested, we can get more addresses from there, from the links, and continue crawling through the web as a search engine would do. Then we can extract the text out of them. And then already we've done quite well. We've now got a corpus, uh, but we probably want to apply some type of testing to it to say, is this really what we want? In our case, we want to do some check to say, is it really in the language we are interested? We are building a corpus for Zulu specifically, so we might apply some very simple heuristic tests, just a very plain test to say, uh, you know, is less than 20% of the content in English, or uh, can we check for some certain words that we know should be there or shouldn't be there, just to decide whether we want to keep it, and then we end up with some sub-step, which is really just a plain text document or a huge list of plain text documents which allows us to do our work. Um, I'm not going to talk anything about corpus linguistics, but for those of you interested to know why cor corpora are really interesting, uh, you can have a look on the web for cor 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 corpus linguistics. Um, it's used in dictionary making, it's used for spell checkers, it's used for machine translation, it's used for just about anything. Uh, it's um, not a new field in linguistics anymore, uh, at some stage it was, but uh, with uh, the era of computer, it's become an accepted way to say, if you deal with text, you need to base it on real text that real people wrote. And that is what we do. We want to develop a spell checker. We don't have a lot of resources. We want to make sure we're targeting the most frequent words and we're representing the language as it is really used. So the nice thing about the way we develop the software is that it's really a bunch of very small programs that does each of those steps independently. There's one that queries the search engine. There's another one that downloads the web pages. There's another one that does the format conversion to plain text. There's a separate one that you can use to decide if you want to keep it or not. And the power of that is that you can substitute it with anything else. So if you have a bunch of URLs come, coming from somewhere else, you don't need to use the initial part that uses the search engine. If you've got a local newspaper in a local language, as we have for Zulu, you can, it has an RSS feed with which you can get the latest news headlines every day with a link to the news article and you can use that instead of your search engine. So you can get your URLs from somewhere else. You can convert the text with a custom program. Let's say you, for some reason, get a lot of text in PDF files or some other format that's not web files, not, that's not web pages. You can convert it. Uh, and you can use very advanced language identification techniques or filtering of what you're interested in. Because it's all in different stages. You can do it at different times. You can redo it later. Let's say you get a better conversion script or you have a, a better way to distinguish between two related languages, you can do that at a later stage, because if you just kept all of the data in your whole five languages. And then a big thing which I'm going to talk about uh, in, in a few minutes is the issue of orthography correction. Now, orthography uh, really has to do with uh, the way of writing. For a lot of um, um, small languages of the world, that's not very well standardized. Or it is standardized, but it's not commonly done. Uh, because people don't have a proper keyboard to type in the proper orthography, they might just not use the accent or the diacritic markers. In, um, sorry, can I just go high tech for a moment? Uh, in South Africa, we have a language with these characters. Um, uh, and no other language in the world uses them. So we developed a keyboard layout to be able to type them, but it hasn't spread that far. There's quite a lot of text in this, or some text in this language, but mostly then without these correct diacritics. And they use the D, L, T, and N with L, these as well, so you can't just automatically, automatically replace them. But people have developed some techniques to try to automatically correct at least some parts of it, and so on. And now you have the opportunity afterwards, when you have the text, to apply these corrections or in a case where uh, a language had an orthography change as mandated by government, you can convert all text that you were able to find on the internet so that you work with a unified orthography. There's much more to be said about that, but just to give you an idea of what, is, what are possible, what some of the things that are possible. Um, so can I just do a check on time? Um, 10, 11.25. No, no, sorry, uh, time left. <laughs> time left. Um, well, you, you can go ahead because we have 10 minutes at the end. Okay, so there's 10 more minutes about. Uh, 
Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. So some small issues with corpora that we just have to realize what we work with is the web is huge, but not that much in Venda, which is one of these languages. It's one of the smallest languages of South Africa. So while the web is a great resource, it has limitations. Um, wherever you try to find things, you get massive pollution of your corpus with other languages. So you might get a site with uh, some Zulu information, but it's really an English website where people discuss Zulu. Uh, so you might download all these web pages, but half of what you get is actually English. Um, that you have a problem with confusion with similar languages, which is very relevant in Africa. Um, the European languages um, have been forced into some molds to a large extent, which means that uh, Portuguese mostly is just Portuguese today, and Italian mostly is just Italian. But in Africa, those boundaries are, are far more confused. So in South Africa, we now have 11 official languages, which is also just a lot of dialects forced into 11 moles instead of 3. Um, but you do get this confusion with similar languages where we have now basically decided that the Nguni group, which is fairly similar, is comprised of four languages. It's a decision made for some reason. Uh, and now when you are harvesting, you might choose to search for certain words, but some of the same words occur in the other languages. Or somebody grew up in a house where both were spoken and they confused them. And those are some of the issues that affect the quality of your corpus. Then you've got orthography issues that I mentioned, where the, the text you get might not be correctly typed. Um, bandwidth, I'm not going to say anything about. <laughs> uh, limited computer literacy, um, which I think is perhaps more of a problem in, in um, uh, rural areas and so on, but that's a problem because we like to use native speakers of the language to help us develop language resources uh, because they are, their minds are less uh, polluted with influence by other languages. Uh, but if you want to now say, well, let's work together on the spell checker, firstly, the motivation is not that strong because the spell checker is not something they crave intensely for. Uh, and um, if you say, use this nice program for classification of words, which I'll show you next, say that's good but um, that's really scary because it means I have to type, I have to do all sorts of things that is an alien activity to some extent. Um, the second last topic is a, is a bit more vague perhaps. If I were to develop a German spell checker today, I could probably make something quite reasonable in a week. Simply because the web is huge, I can get experts quite quickly, I could get other resources like online dictionaries that could help me automate humongous parts of the process. I might not get something excellent in a week, by no means, but I could make some English or some German spell checker probably within a week. But a lot of those things like online dictionaries, even paper dictionaries, are not that commonly available. Very recently, the first dictionary was published in one of our smallest South African languages. And for many other African languages, the first dictionary still has to be published. So you can see where sort of the environment starts to look different. All right, enough on corpora. I'm going to quickly talk about the second tool I mentioned. I'm sure it's getting a bit boring for you. It's called Spelt, with the idea that we're working towards um, um, how you words might be spelt. Um, it's really a tool for word classification and for cleaning the word dirty word list. So we build some word lists from the corpora. We pick the most frequent words that we want to work on next. But we know that the quality won't be great. So there will be typing mistakes. There will even be common typing mistakes that we want to get rid of if we want to make something like a spell checker. But it applies to things like machine translations, uh, dictionaries, or whatever. But the main thing is because uh, of the way Zulu is written, we needed to form not only frequent words, but words in their most basic form, or um, you might call it a radical, or you might call it a, a word stem, because that is what we need to, to base the spell checker technology on. And then, obviously, for review to make sure that it's actually correct. Um, and because we'll end up with words classified as correct and incorrect, we'll have some nice testing data, not just to test the correct words, but also spell checkers should be tested on incorrect words as well. So that's really why we built it. It's a very, very simple and primitive program, uh, but really meant for just this task. And that's all it, it claims to do. Um, and this is just a plain screenshot. There is nothing more to it. This is the entire piece of software. Um, but just so you can get an idea of the type of things we've worked on. It will here yeah, show the things that are coming up. So words sorted in this case by uh, frequency that we got from a newspaper, or mostly from a newspaper. It will show the word as it occurs, as we call it, say, the surface form. Uh, so that's the word as it occurs.